this this today's talk is in response to a lot of kind of questions that people had been asking me about so i thought that this will be a good thing to talk about and see if you are interested in different lifestyle so this is my lifestyle here you know so that's the way everybody should be doing so i'm going to talk today about how to live longer better not just live long you have to live longer but better health better health you don't want to be in wheelchair or on dialysis things like that okay this is how you can remain or should remain healthy till god calls you or whatever you believe in okay. so uh let's first talk about what we mean by actual longevity we say that we want to live longer but there are so many different things that people talk about it the first thing is everybody knows about life expectancy that they say okay i want longer life expectancy that's not right life expectancy is first thing is how long you can expect to live so suppose i ask somebody today who is 5 year old and say how long you are expect to live that will be different than if somebody is 70 and i ask how long are you going to live or how how long you are expected to live so that depends on the age so we usually do life expectancy at birth that when you are born how much you are going to, what is your expectation how long you will live and it depends on diet genetics your gender that is sex environment so all those things affect life expectancy but it is a it is a number given to you that you are expected to live at this uh, uh, this age second thing we talk about long life is excuse me everybody please sit down uh please sit down and no talking here hamad bhai and uh, okay i will not have to call names again you know everybody knows those who are non physician members here those who are non physicians don't feel that uh it's being uh kind of singled out okay when i call the name because we were like this is an educational lecture this is a topic that everybody should listen if they don't want to listen they can go outside free to go outside but don't actually disturb anybody else here and if you cannot hear me who who cannot hear me who cannot hear me yamin bhai i am asking people who cannot hear me no, we all can hear you everybody clear yeah everybody is able to hear i am not a musician i am not a singer i don't need loud speaker okay so uh, everybody call loud speaker but i think we need to kind of listen so that everybody can if they stay quiet they will be able to see and enjoy it a little bit better so second thing is life span life span is dependent on each species like human life span it means how long you could potentially live it means that it's a maximum number of years you can live say as a human how long can we live so unless you kind of believe in mahabharat and ramayan where the ram lived for 10000 years or uh actually aswatthama is uh, immortal right i'm not talking about that but that may be true but i'm saying how long you are you can live the most if everything is completely in your control everything is normal fine no problem there is still a limit to how long we can live as that's life span but the third thing is longevity longevity is how long you actually live past the average it means that suppose an average person is expected to live 70 year and if you live 75 years then you have longer longevity so we are talking about this longevity today how can we increase or go beyond the average life span of people uh, now even in longevity there are some other thing that you will hear first thing is centenarian is those who are age 100 year or over we are called centenarian and, and uh, there are very few in the world who are over 100 year of age and we are going to learn from them that how did they live beyond 100 year and the second thing even in centenarian there is what we call actual super centenarian they are live beyond 110 year of age and let me tell you only one out of 
thousand centennial live beyond 110 years. So after 100 years of age, it is very small number of people who go even beyond that. So we are going to talk about that longevity today. So first thing is life expectancy we talked about. So in 1871, nobody was even keeping track of life expectancy. But you can see on the few, and one of them was India, that life expectancy at that time was only in low 50s. It means that people did, were not expected to live beyond age 50, 54 at that time. If you just go forward in 1920s, only few countries had increased the life expectancy. And it was North America, Australia. You can see their life expectancy at that time was in 60s. India was still stuck in 50s at that time. And then if you keep on going, I'm just going to say the latest kind of number we have from 2021, the life expectancy in United States is in high 70s. Uh, and this is over the last few years, few decades, it has been going up. Except, you know, what is the life expectancy in United States today compared to two years ago? It has gone down in last year. Yeah, this is yeah. the first time this happened where two years in a row, the life expectancy in the United States has gone down. The so life expectancy of males is 73 years, and for females it is 79. It was in mid-80s before, two years ago, and there, it is a lot of combination of COVID and drugs and other stuff, but the expectancy has decreased in the last two years, and that is not good for a developed country to see this. So other thing we talked about is lifespan. So this is just to keep yourself clear what we are talking about today. The other is lifespan. So human lifespan is about 79, 80 years average, but they can go at the most 100 years. But there are a lot of other animals that live longer than humans. And most of those animals are aquatic animals or those who live in water or ocean. So whale live more than, more than 200 years. Do you know that the tortoise, they live 300, 250, 300, 500 years. Wow. The one thing is, uh, so this one shows all the animals that live longer, they are mostly in the water. And one of the thing I want you to see is far right side, far, far left end is the jellyfish. And jellyfish is supposed to, uh, seems to be immortal. They keep on living and living and living, they, they, they just don't die. And therefore, if you look in the market, all the things that are kind of directed towards the seniors or older people, they say it is made from jellyfish. You know, you will see a lot of things from jellyfish. But that's because they are supposed, they are, they seem to be immortal. They live very long. So, uh, we don't know what is in them that makes them immortal like that. But they assume that if you get extract of that and eat, then you will become immortal or live longer. So now, we, we are now back to actual longevity. So life ends because of death. I'm also becoming spiritual now, all right? <laughs> so life ends because of death. So why do, why do a person die? So there are very few causes that there are doctors make it, thousands of causes. But the main cause first is acute illness. If you are sick from something, acutely, it means you are completely normal and then something happened to you. And the first thing in that is infection. So if you think about it, the life expectancy has increased because the infection is getting controlled better than before. And that's one of the reasons. So first thing is acute illness from infection. Second is malignancy or cancer. Again, treatment of cancer and finding them sooner, all that has helped. Third is metabolic derangement. That's what diabetes and sugar problem, other things come in. Again, the treatment for that has uh, gotten very better. And last is toxin of some sort, poisoning or drugs, things like that. So you may die because of that, and that has nothing to do with your longevity, because it is not under your control that you get any of those things. The second thing is you get sick acutely, but you have underlying chronic disease. That makes you to die sooner, and those are again the most important cause in that is chronic actually uh, uh, reaction from the immune system uh, that causes a lot of changes in your body. Now that one is very important. I'm not going to talk about inflammation, 
but that's the most common cause of chronic illness and when you get sick acutely you die because of that but the underlying cause is chronic inflammation and second is metabolic again uh, as a chronic illness the third cause of death is injury and again that is not preventable 100 percent but there are some ways yeah when uh, we can actually prevent injuries uh, by doing a lot of other things society wise the most important cause of death that we still are working on is aging process that we all age right we say that you are getting now old age but because you age so aging process is the one if you do something to that process decrease that process slow down that process you will have longer longevity when we are talking about longevity we are talking about doing something to aging process so aging process uh, is slow loss of function in the body of all different kinds of systems and that could be genetic based on your diet physical activity social activity and spirituality all those affect your uh, kind of rate of aging so uh, aging is a hot topic in medicine right now because acute illnesses have been controlled there is no more research going on in acute illness now more and more is going on how to decrease or decrease the rate of aging and aging starts at birth as soon as you are born you start aging right and during the first few years of life aging is actually makes you to have increase in your bodily functions all the bodily functions improve or increase get better and then when you become a young adult 20s 30s it becomes steady means your body functions remain same throughout and then after age 30 40 those body functions starts decreasing there is loss of function that's aging that's natural way of aging and we'll know why why that happened now how do we know person is what aging you know so uh, people want to know how old you are or something can we do a test or something and say that oh this blood test says that you are 76 year old or this x-ray says you are 32 year old no there are no real good aging marker we all know from outside like people tell me that hey you look old because my hairs are gray and i am bald right that's an aging right that's an aging marker but it is not true 100 percent because some young people may also have that and some old like him he still has hairs you know so uh, we don't and uh, those who don't have hair sometimes they put head on it like like me you and Jagdish Bhai and Hemant Bhai and I see all of them now so I think that I'm going to start wearing hat now if I can find a really good one uh, to, to, to hide my aging right but that's one thing the second thing is the skin you know skin actually becomes wrinkled uh, the third thing is eyes you know we say, everybody says that at actually certain age you all need glasses and they say I think in 40s you start having that problem uh, again that's an aging process so we don't have any marker of that so it becomes hard to say how to study aging you know so people have been studying aging that why do we age what is the main reason so cellular because this is for all the physicians uh, the theory of aging is based on oxidation or presence of the free radicals in the cell free radicals and many people will know about it as the use of antioxidants you will hear that many times that antioxidants help you so what is antioxidant oxidation is means an oxygen has something to do with inside the cell and that's called aerobic actual metabolism aerobic metabolism is when oxygen is used in the body to do some kind of metabolic work now that oxygen if it becomes what we call free radical it means those who are in physics they know oxygen is two molecule we call it o2 but if it is o1 that can happen from o3 o3 is ozone so ozone gets split into oxygen o2 and o1 that's free radical that causes damage in the cell so all the things that we see here right now are ultraviolet light radiation smoking uh, air pollution mitochondrial dysfunction inflammation all those things lead to increase in free radicals that causes increased aging i'm going to go over this thing. we have already gone over that so what should we do to decrease this aging 
So, uh, if you look right now, there are a number of people who are the more than 110, 112 year old in the world, in the world, are only 36. More than 112, these are called super centenarian, only 36, and out of those, 34 are female. Wow. Why are you clapping? I'm not sure. <laughs> you want the females to live longer? Clapping for the females. Yeah. <laughs> to me, to me, it seems that the females are cause of early death in males. Yeah. <laughs> No, yes, okay. I, I'm not going to argue now because I see more females here and I may be bombarded afterwards. So, no, but something to do with that. That's what we have to think. That may be something to do with female that makes them live longer. The second thing is, oldest person living today, right now, is 117 plus. And longest person who lived that we had been able to verify the age is 122. But if you want to know unverified age, I will show you that person too, is 125 or more. But I mean, this is, in science, we always need some kind of proof. So these are the four people we talked about. The one, uh, Jean Mitchell Kalman, she lived 122 years. She just died uh, in 1997. She had been, uh, uh, she had seen four generations. And her kids lived in 90s too. Okay, so she has been, uh, the, up till now, the longest person who lived 122 years with proof of age. The one who is right now alive, longest female is 117-year-old Maria. She is from Spain. She was born in San Francisco. And they moved to New Orleans and then they moved to Spain afterwards. Uh, and she is a nurse. She was a nurse. And she, she is still alive, 117 years. The one uh, in the bottom is Japanese guy, uh, Kimura, Mr. Kimura. He lived up to 116 year old. That's the longest male survivor that we know of with proof of age. And the one who is right now male who is kind of longest survivor, 114 year, Venezuelan guy, Mr. Juan Perez. So these are uh, all kind of proven. But the one that's being yeah. told right now, and you can I think people are already Googling about it yeah. or to yeah. say, am I right or not? But Swami, Siva, Swami Sivanan is thought to be 125 years of age. He doesn't have proof of birth, birth certificate. He was born in Bangladesh before, you know, so before even Bangladesh came in. So uh, he was born that time, but and he got Padma Sri just three years ago, four years ago, when he was 121 years of age. So he is supposed to be the longest survivor right now, but we don't have proof of so everybody says that, how can we increase the life or the longevity? Is there any pill or injection we take that will help, right? So people trying all these different things. First thing is the human growth hormone. Growth hormone injection had been in work for, for a while, few years ago, not to be effective with some side effects. Antioxidants, antioxidants, there are multiple antioxidants, but there are vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, a lot of other, uh, they have been, I mean, people have been taking it, not actually proven to change, actually, uh, change this longevity. Uh, flavonoids in tea and coffee and all those, they, they have those flavonoids. Uh, phenols, melatonin, DHEA is the one that people have been interested most because that's a steroid that gets converted into estrogen. That is, that is a female hormone. So people thought that maybe taking that will increase longevity. It didn't. And it didn't make them uh, uh, better in their uh, general health. And last we talk about vitamins A, C. So none of these seem to have changed or increased, increased longevity. So we have to see what, what makes you live longer or what are the determinants of longevity. The first thing is genetics. Everybody says genetics. They look at me and they say, yeah, uh, my mom lived up to 95. I think people, a lot of actual people have seen her, met her. And they say, yeah, you have genes to long, live long. Well, genetics plays only 20% of the role in your longevity. Otherwise, uh, I will say Madna will live longer than me, definitely anyway, but because her father who is here with us, he's 96. And he is still sitting here and he's smiling at me now. See? He says hi. So uh, 
uh, he's 96, so Vandana has genes, so I am really worried <laughs> that she's going to outlive me now, right? Uh, this, uh, second thing, however, the 80% of longevity, I mean, uh, longevity depends on diet or nutrition. Second thing is physical activity. Third thing is environment. Fourth is society. And last is, again, the spiritual thing. These have been, so now, so the people thought about can we find what is important in this lifestyle that makes people live longer? So, uh, Mr. Dave Ethel Butner, Deepak Bhai uh, knows about him. Uh, in 2004, he started to look into it. And he said, let's go and find where, the, where these people live the longest. And find and go and find out about them. What they do, what they eat, how they do everything else. And so, they decided to go ahead and look all over the world and find people who have lived longer than 100 years. And number of people more than 100 is more than 10 times the United States. It means they have been really lot of people were kind of living more than 100 years of age. So they found five areas in the world where the people live longer than 100, more than US or other developed countries. One first one is Loma Linda, California. You know, yes. I am from, yes. I practice in Loma Linda. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, right? I'm <laughs> Second is Costa Rica, Italy, uh, actually Sardinia. Sardinia was the first one they looked at, Italian population, Greek, and actually uh, Japan. Japan. So they went and looked. So you know why it is called, so these are called blue zones. Blue zones. So anybody know why it is called blue zone? Vanta, you cannot answer that. Okay. Because she told me why it is called blue zone. I was still going to look for it, but she asked me and I said, really, I don't know why it's called blue zone. Any idea why it is called blue zone? What? Close to the ocean. So Loma Linda is not close to the ocean. Loma Linda is middle of Inland Empire. You know, near the sand and dust and mountains. Okay. What? Eat fish, okay, well, one of the thing, but it's not, I mean, fish is not blue, you know, blue, if you are thinking about blue as water, change your, change your thinking. Because this is the, this is the answer, why it is called like a blue zone. Because when they started first, they looked at Italy, they found Sardinia, Sardinia is uh, off the coast of actually Italy, where most of the people live hundreds, and they, they went to the, actually census and looked how many were hundred. So there was that little area of the Sardinia that had most of actually people hundred year or older. And as you go a little bit away from it, it becomes lighter color. But they wanted to say that this is the area that is more than hundred. So they marked it with blue ink. Yeah. So when they marked with blue ink, next time they talked about it, they say, okay, let's go to the blue zone. It means the zone was blue because of the ink they used. And that's what happens <laughs> happens in the medicine. We do a lot of things that accidentally gets done better. And, and, uh, so one of the things was this actually blue zone. So uh, I will go a little quickly with this now. So they looked at these five zones. They went there, epidemiologists, nutritionists, uh, uh, doctors, and they evaluated the whole population of those who were over 100. And they, they, they looked at multiple things. And the first thing we talked about is diet. So in the diet, they talked about what they eat, when they eat, how much they eat, where they eat, how the food is cooked, whether it is boiled or grilled or fried, and all those things they looked. And they just found out this, and they also looked at different things in the society, their actual spirituality, activity, all those levels. And then they came up with all these different factors. And they, boil down to nine important factors that were important to that was separate or different than all these other other areas of the world. So they looked at say in the top is actually Loma Linda where they went and looked at the diet. They said they eat they have a healthy social circle, they eat more nuts, they have high soy consumption, they don't drink alcohol, they have a lot of faith-based activities, uh, they eat whole grains. Uh, they are actually culturally isolated. It means they all are an Adventist kind of population. They all stick together. Uh, and 
their diet was mainly all it's plant based no smoking uh constant moderate physical activity not high level not low level just just and pounds and uh social engagement and eating lot of legumes that's pulses or on lentils so they, they looked at all different areas and they found out what is common in all this so we are going to look into this what are these uh, nine things that are important it's called power nine if you want to know about it, it's called power nine it means these nine things are the one that if you if you address those there is chance of increased longevity now i know some of you don't want to live longer who doesn't want to live longer well i will say everybody wants to live longer but healthier yeah right right so you you say that the answer is that i i don't want to live longer in wheelchair but i want to live longer if i walk around uh, until i die right i mean if i can do my daily activities myself so that's that's like living longer so those nine things are first one there are there were four different things in it first thing is some kind of actual physical activity or movement second thing is outlook towards life the third thing is the diet eat wisely and fourth is your social connections so these four things are important those four things have these nine things in that the first thing is move naturally second is you need to have purpose in life now i may sound somebody who is doing a pep talk here but you need to have purpose in life third thing is down shift down shift is those who don't have electric car anymore but those who have still old cars which are geared you know the way you down shift from high gear to lower gear it's called down shifting it means slow down slowing down that that's down shift fourth is 80% rule and we'll talk about that 80% rule plant slant in your diet in a plant based diet wine at 5 and we we'll talk about it you know loma linda people they don't drink alcohol so it is not must okay they they that for sure seventh thing is belong belong to somewhere your tribe or your community or somewhere eighth one is loved ones first it means put family first i stop if things are after that's what vanna tells me so i have to put family first right everything else is secondary but after the family i stop it comes in that's what for right tribe and let me tell you out of all these things what is the most important out of nine things wine at 5 wine at 5 okay. down shift so uh, down shift most important is number 9 okay and you will be surprised because people did study about it scientific study and found out what is more important so first thing is move naturally move naturally means you do physical activity regularly walk so all these actually centenarians they had interviewed all of them all without fail did daily walking and it was not a leisure walk it was a brisk walking okay so i see a lot of people walking but they are walking like hey hi how are you and then stop and then uh, have the dog and they pet the dog and then that's not walking okay so walking is continuous activity where your heart rate goes up by 10% that what brisk walking is if you second thing is plant a garden and do stuff when you bend down and do stuff with uh, hands that helps third is if you it is very boring sometimes walking nothing else going on right you are alone so make a day walking day you know say you ask your friends to walk around with it uh, uh with you enroll in yoga class inconvenience yourself inconvenience yourself means don't make things too easy or simple for you to do it means i should not use this i should go there and change it <laughs> really that's called remote tv you know don't use remote go there and change the change the channel that's called uh, internet don't use uh actual robots to do like vacuuming use yourself to go and vacuum lawn mower and things like that you have to do yourself uh and most important is have fun doing it if you are going to be vacuuming and then giving and saying hi words to your wife or your spouse or somebody and say i am not doing this i am not doing this something like that then it doesn't work second thing is purpose you need to have purpose in life and the purpose the best thing you can think about is why i wake up in the morning you have to know that part and if you can take something from actually today think about it tonight when you go to sleep 
say why I I would like to wake up in the morning. Why? And that one uh, is more like a personal mission statement. So when we actually started Iscopy, we had to write mission statement that why do we want Iscopy to exist, right? And we say to do this, to do that, do that, and then you follow them. The same way in your life, you have to know what is your purpose, and those purpose are the important is what you love. Second is what you are good at. You have to make sure that you, what, whatever you are going to do, you are good at. Uh, what the world needs. You don't want to do something that nobody needs. And the fourth thing is, can I, can I be paid for it? And that's the thing that is lacking in Iscope. I'm not getting paid for it. So I think that I'm going to ask people now starting paying for it. Because I learned my personal statement now, personal mission statement. So from today, I think there is some support from the group, right? That they should start paying annual dues or something now, because all those are one-time life membership for hundred dollars. So, oh no, I don't hear anybody saying yes. I will pay. Yes, yes. Oh no, I'm just saying. So, I think that that is down now. So I will have to find out some other way to do it. And lastly, learn new things: music, language, something like that. The third is downshift. Make sure that you slow down. You know, slow down is create sanctuary in time to focus on self, yourself, families, nature, God, whatever you believe in. Decrease stress by having this. It will decrease the chronic inflammation. That will increase longevity. As we talked about, inflammation is the most common thing that we find in this. One of the actually centenarians was asked, what should you do? And she said, life is short. Don't run so fast, you miss it. Fantastic. Make sure Very that good. you don't go run so fast that you don't see what else is happening around you. Very good. Uh, reduce the noise. And noise, I mean real noise. And I've been trying to tell Ankur and Vijay Bhai, said, decrease your noise. You know, we don't want to. So decrease noise is really decrease the level of sound. Correct. That is important. Decrease the sound of TV. And, and don't have TV in every room. Only one room should have TV. In the other rooms, it can be used as furniture. Like in my bedroom, it is used as furniture, right? So uh, you can use all those in one single room. The one that I like most, that I will like everybody else to do is everywhere, go 15 minutes early. If I say 6.30 is the time to start here, everybody should be here at 6.15, not 6.45, you know? Yeah, so those, I will not like to say that who did it or who did not, and you know yourself, right? It is, uh, I came first time, therefore I came early today. That doesn't count, okay? So the thing that counts is every appointment, doctor's appointment, you go 15 minutes early, even though you know a doctor is going to take you two hours late. You know, it doesn't matter. You, if you go early, it will reduce your stress. Okay. I can tell you that. Very For good. me, it is very important. And Vanna is looking at me now and laughing at it, because I tell her, that I have to go early. I have to be there in time. And they said, nobody else is going to be there. I said, it doesn't matter to me. I want to be there on time. Because I may miss my appetizers or something. I don't know. Right? But I want to be there in time. So make sure that our next ISCOPI meeting, everybody is 15 minutes early. I will, I will try my best to come 15 minutes early, but I'm not guaranteeing it, but I will be there. And last is meditate. That will help you downshift, decrease. Other thing is 80% rule. Now this is where diet come in. 80% rule is Hara Hachibu, that is from Japan, where they asked people, the one thing that they kind of came out with that, when you eat, stop eating when you are 80% full. That is 80% rule. So how do we know we are 80% full? Is when you are not hungry anymore. Don't eat until you feel full. Feel full is 100%. Maybe for some 120% when we are at buffet or somewhere, but you know, 80% uh, rule, if you follow that, it is the very important thing that people actually lose weight on that. 80% rule. If you stop eating before, now today is exception, okay? So you can have, <laughs> once in a while you can have that 120% rule, but 80% rule is the one that is the most important one. And how can you do that then? If you can't do it, then, First thing is serve and store. It means that you make the food at home when you make it. 
don't put the all the food on the table where you sit down and eat put it where it was prepared on the stove or somewhere go there make your plate and whatever is left put it in refrigerator or put it away so you don't go back and eat more you know that's where it's that's called serve and store is that you take it and then you store it you don't go back no second we call it now people are worried about it here looks like that second day make food look bigger it means the amount looks big and that's if you add like lettuce or green leaf green kind leafy stuff on it it will look bigger if you you if you drink milk shake or something use whipped milk so it looks fills up the glass full sooner use smaller if actually we saw so not a 9 inch kind of dinner plate use 6 inch dinner plate i should have told him today that that you should have smaller plate then it would have been better you know so smaller plate taller glasses when the glasses are tall you drink less i mean really these are these are all studied scientifically studied and shown to be uh, kind of affecting amount of eating buy smaller packages and that's why costco and sams are going to be important okay don't go to costco and sams and buy 10 kilo bag or something when you can buy 2 ounce packages that will make you eat less daily actual reminder keep a scale weight scale in bathroom or somewhere where you weigh yourself weigh not daily then at least weekly but that will remind you that yes i am getting overweight now i need to do something about it eat slowly focus on food when you are eating sit down and eat don't walk around and eat and eat early most of centenarians that they had studied they said they ate most of the meals before half of the day the second half of the day they eat less so lunch or breakfast should be bigger than the dinner i know things are different here next is plant slant and we'll go very fast on it now uh, avoid meats uh, four to six vegetable servings per day keep fruit and vegetable accessible it means if you put something on the table put fruits on the table so when you go around house you pick a fruit and not chips Lead with beans. That's the thing that came up from all centenarian areas, that they had beans in their diet, all of them, and and that's very important. So for us, beans, legumes, lentils, nuts are important. But you have to remember, nuts are very concentrated source of calories. Don't eat more than two ounces of nuts. You know, otherwise that itself will have it, uh, consume more calories, and use smaller packages. Now somebody wanted to know why not five, right? And and that uh, out of five these areas, three areas people used to drink regularly, but that was red wine, only one or two glasses a day, at the most, and not like having one kind of glass a day is like seven glasses a week. So Saturday night I will have seven glasses. That's my fourth of week. That's not good. it is one is one at a time no more than that you cannot have more of the week or a month in one sitting it has been shown to kind of decrease the rate of heart disease reduce stress and uh, if you take it with a meal then it makes you eat less because you drink more and you eat slowly and there are uh, some something in which red wine that will decrease arteriosclerosis cholesterol uh, in the arteries but it comes with some toxic or side effects and those are it will actually increase the risk of the breast cancer increase the risk of accidents you know therefore we have all this uh, dui problems and ultimately it can lead to liver or brain damage so uh, you have to be careful about that one and you know people in lower income they don't drink and they have very high kind of longevity seven is belong belong to a particular spiritual community doesn't matter what kind of spiritual community it is it can be christianity islam uh, hindu or atheist doesn't matter you have to belong to that community spiritual community where you get involved with their daily activities their uh, you can try joining their choir or singing volunteer or if you don't want to do any of those things you can help them in their organization uh so all those things help and if you are not doing it go ahead and give it a try for 8 weeks the thing is people have shown and this was in spf or i mean actually lobalinda study that there was study of uh 
34,000 Seventh day Adventists in Loma Linda. Over like 12 years, they were followed and they found out those who went to this actual services to church regularly, means at least once a month, uh, then they were 20% less likely to die at that particular age from those who were not going, going to services. So uh, it does help. It will force you to sit down and reflect and meditate or whatever you do, but it will at least downshift during, during that time. The uh, eighth one is loved one first, family first, you know, that, that, that we talked about. Uh, and again, this has been shown that in those families where they have three generations, grandparents, parents, and child, the rate of illness, any illness, is less in all three generations. Kids get less sick, parents get less sick, grandparents get less sick. So that's an important thing. The second thing is to do that, you have to live together. And for that, you need to have a smaller house, not 5,000 square feet house. You need a smaller house because if you have big house and rooms are separate, everybody's in different rooms, that's not going to work. You need a smaller place where everybody gets. So if you have a bigger house, then you establish one room where everybody has to meet every day. And then it could be meal time, it could be prayer time, it could be some time every day. And other thing is plan your vacations or something once a year, go to like kind of festivals or uh, some kind of celebration every, uh, every now and then with the family. Those who don't have three generations, they have only two and they say, my parents died or passed away. And so you make a shrine in family. Uh, in your one, one of the room in the house, you keep pictures, photos of parents, grandparents in there and their belongings and other stuff that keeps you connected to them. And the last one I told you is the most important one because this has been studied the most, is right tribe. It means your circle. Identify your circle and see you find those people who are like you, who actually believe in things like that. If you are not going to have similar beliefs, then it's not going to work. You need to have similar, uh, similar people. There was a kind of study in uh, New England Journal of Medicine where they have shown that if your friends are obese, they were all normal before. If one person becomes obese, then very high chance that everybody else will become obese in that group. Or if somebody loses weight, then other in that group loses weight. So that's a very important thing of the connectingness. Uh, be likable. Don't be grumpy old guy. <laughs> oh, he is? He is not old yet. But I think that is an important thing. And therefore, I try to make things very light, but this is very important, okay? If, if we want to be happy, then you show it to everybody that you want to be happy and not be like grumpy and uh, and create time together in the group. There are different ways to do it. So this is actually courtesy of Mr. Viret Sa. Oh, this is this is your slide. So you know uh, who is our Surgeon General. Vivek actual Murthy, you know, right? Vivek yeah, Murthy, Surgeon yeah. General. Yeah. He is talk now and he is all the things that he leads to right now is fighting loneliness in seniors. Because that's the most important thing giving rise to problem in seniors is being lonely. And loneliness is the more dangerous than smoking, drinking, obesity, air pollution. You can see the rate of mortality is higher in those people who are isolated rather than those who are not and have other kind of issues. So uh, at least you take something from this that belong to some group. I'm not saying belong to ISCOPI, okay, because I know many of you don't come in my inner circle. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, all of you come in my inner circle. I love you all, right? Yeah. So how can we do this? So first thing is you want to know where you stand, right? Now there are just last one or two slides. The first thing is blue zone developed by uh, Mr. Butler, and then uh, he had then come up with 
plans, projects to help society. And I think Deepak Bank was involved in one of them in which cities here. Minnesota was the other one. They took one city, went to that uh, administrator and politicians and everybody, and told them what should they do to improve them. And one of the things, I was really surprised that in actually one city they were trying to, there was a lot of traffic. They said that we are going to widen the road. And they said, don't widen the road. Make a walking path here, Correct. and next to it make a park, Correct. and make a bike lane. So you see all these bike lanes? It is courtesy of people with <laughs> that probably, right? No, I'm not sure. But those are, they give and do this kind of consulting and say where to put bike lanes, where to put grocery store, yes. where to put alcohol store, liquor store. All those things, we think that, you no, know, they get their kind of feedback from this kind of people and say that where and uh, how much and things like that. So if you go to www.bluezones.com, yes. everybody can go ahead and do that. It will take some time to do it, I think, because of aging process, some functions are slow, I know, but that's fine. If you go on that, you will find Vitality Compass. Vitality Compass. You go and click on it, and there are 32 questions. So I think it will not be done right now. You answer all that question, then they will give you the answer in four different ways. The first is your biology case. Everybody can tell because you have to put your birthday. So they will say, you are 84 year old or whatever. The second is, what is your life expectancy? Based on the answers that you give, they give you life expectancy. Then they say, your healthy life expectancy. It means that based on your all these answers, they will say your diet is healthy or not, and so what, how much you can expect. But out of that, how much will be healthy life compared to non-healthy life? And what can you do to add more years to your life. So they will give you recommendations. So I want everybody, if they are if they are interested in longevity and how to live longer, better, go ahead and get, you don't have to tell anybody, you just do on vitality compass and then come up with that and then go back. Now, if, if anybody wants to know more about it, I do consulting, how much should I charge? Five, five? <laughs> Thousand per hour or something? No, no, no. Service, <laughs> no? service to the society. Oh, okay, service to society. Okay, all right. We just heard about it. Okay. So, I hope to celebrate your hundredth birthday here, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't think I don't think we have too much time for yeah, question and answer. Program, yes. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and start the program. Okay. And anybody has question, they can talk to me or Vandana afterwards. See, is it better?